So last time we started an example for our airplane calculating the trim solution for that. So we're going to continue that today. And the values that we need for that That's at 5,000 feet, altitude. All right, so occasionally during the semester, I will give you a chance for extra credit when we do some calculations in class. So pull out a sheet of paper. Today is one of those days. You're going to fill it out. In other words, you're going to do these calculations that we're doing yourself on a piece of paper, and then you're going to turn it in. You guys on Zoom, there's a Blackboard entry where you can upload a scan of what we do in class today, so make sure you do that. Uh, you need to do that, I think, by 2 o'clock this afternoon. I just set the, the deadline. You guys here in class, you'll just hand me a piece of paper with your name on it. So last time we calculated the determinant. Let's go ahead and get that on this. So let's recalculate that. Pull out your calculator or your cell phones, and we plug in the numbers. Show me you're plugging in the numbers for that formula. Should have everything. Oh, I didn't give you the lift curve slope, did I? This is, hang on, this is A. This. Yeah, sorry, what? I hope they're listening. You guys on Zoom, we're doing this. You're going to do this on a piece of paper, do these calculations, and uh, submit this to Blackboard. There's an entry in Blackboard called in class number one. That's where you're going to submit it. Did you see something on the chat? Looks like people, some people are on top of it. All right, so we're good, right? And in fact, it's right here in Blackboard. Uh, this is what you're looking for in Blackboard is the in-class number one in red. So it stands out. Okay, so we're calculating the determinant, and then we're going to calculate CL trim. We're in level flight. And our velocity was 220 feet per second. Let's get those values. And again, I'm going to give you the numbers, so make sure on your piece of paper you show the numbers plugged in that you actually did the calculation. And then we're going to calculate alpha trim. So we're going to 
need seal trim for that and the determinant. So we're gonna give those numbers here in just a minute. So we already did the determinant. Last time we found out that was minus 4.70. Is everybody getting that? I don't see anybody saying, yeah, you're getting that? Okay. So we're taking all these numbers and sticking them in for the values here, here, and here. And then CL trim, you put the weight in, one half, the density I gave you, V squared, wing area, we got that. And you should get 0 0.306. And then we should always ask ourselves, is this a reasonable value for CL? What do you think? Go back to your airfoil data tables and what does CL range? It goes possibly negative at negative angles of attack, right? And it goes positive. So what? Yeah, zero to 0.8, zero to one. So this is a reasonable value. It's always good to say, hey, does that seem right? All right, how about the alpha trim calculation? Well, I guess I just gave you that number. So let's do that. And then we got to do delta E trim. So let me give you the formula for that. Remember to put the minus sign out here. Let's scratch these together. So let's put a line through here. Yeah, so I was asking, this is CM0 times A here, or CL alpha. How's it going? So you should get an angle of attack of, drum roll please. Punch the numbers, you get zero, six, nine, four. What are the units? Yeah, you gotta look back at the stuff that goes in here. In fact, you have to check, make sure it's all per radian. If you got maybe data from different tables, you might get per degree from one and you gotta convert. So always watch your units. This is per radian. No, no, sorry. Yeah. Stuck on that radians. And so if you convert that to degrees, you get about 3.98 degrees. And then you say, is that reasonable for an angle of attack? Yeah. Angles of attack, you know, you get up to about 10, 12, 14, you're starting to stall. This is well below the stall. And then for the elevator, you should be getting minus 
0.00233 per radian, or about minus 0.134 degrees. That's pretty small. The angle that the elevator has to be deflected to trim the airplane. No, this has nothing to do with st stability. This is trim, which means equilibrium. So you have to have equilibrium before you even talk about stability, right? And we said, well, CL has to equal CL trim, which is the weight divided by all that stuff, right? And then CM has to be zero. So those are two equations that we're solving. Yeah. So this is pitch trim. And then some of the forces vertically has to equal zero. So it's static equilibrium, really. Yeah. So we look at that, and it's pretty close to zero. That's OK. That means the elevator's not deflected much. And if we knew this airspeed was our cruise condition, which it turns out for this airplane it is, then that makes sense because typically the airplane will be designed so that you need a small or zero amount of elevator when you're in cruise because the elevator creates drag. So if it's not deflected, then you're getting a minimal amount of drag. Other flight conditions, you'll need different elevator positions and that's okay. In fact, what if we flew at a different airspeed? What if we change this to 140? Makes sense, right? We could fly slower. So we change this. Does that show up on the zoom? Yeah, it shows up pretty well, doesn't it? Can you guys see that? So hopefully on the screen. So what's going to change from what we just did? So now we're doing our new and improved, not necessarily improved, but new lower airspeed. Let's see, does the determinant change? No. How about CL trim? Yeah, so you're going to plug in a different number here. And so now we're going to get a CL trim of, I didn't write it down, I just have the numbers. Somebody, let's calculate that. What's the new CL trim for this airspeed? 0.757. So it's the same density, same area, same weight, but now we're flying slower with the same weight, and so we have to have a higher CL. Is that still reasonable? Yeah, but it's probably getting up there near stall, yeah. Yeah, yeah, put this on there. And then we're going to calculate the new alpha trim and delta E trim for this other airspeed. And just double checking, you guys on Zoom can see the red stuff, right? Yeah, somebody in class said, should we put this on our sheet? And the answer is yes. So I get a new alpha trim already converted to degrees of 10.14 degrees and the elevator trim 3.5 degrees.
And again, I'll give you a minute to put those numbers in and, and verify that calculation. And that'll be the end of what I want you to put on your sheet. So the people that are in class here, I'll ask for you to turn that in and then on Zoom, upload it, scan it and upload it to Blackboard. And then we're going to talk about well, what does that mean? Like obviously we get an increase in angle of attack and that's because we're flying slower. So we have to fly at a higher angle of attack to get the CL. But what do we think about the elevator changing? So we'll talk about that here in a minute. Oh, yeah, I did that again, didn't I? It's just radians because it's an angle. Sorry about that. Let me check that. That seems there is something strange in there. No, no, what's CM delta E? Did I get the sign wrong on that? This is a negative number. Yeah, that's, that's because it turns out this number here is bigger than this. Otherwise, you're right. You're going to get. That's why we do this. Yeah, okay, so I set Blackboard due date at 1.30 today, not 2 o'clock. So just make sure you do it by 1.30. What the hmm?
All right, while you guys are wrapping up, hopefully you're close to done. I'm gonna switch over to the other board. And we wanna create a plot of what we just did. So we have at an airspeed of 140 feet per second, we have to E trim of minus 3.5 degrees, and that at an airspeed of 220 feet per second, we have a delta E trim of minus 0.134 degrees. So if we plot that, the elevator versus velocity, we've got Here's, say this is negative 3.5 down here. So here's our 140. Here's 220. So we got a data point down here. And then at 220, we're pretty close to zero. And so from just these two data points, you could fill in a whole bunch of different airspeeds. But notice that the slope here, the change in elevator with respect to velocity is positive. And so which way is positive elevator? Because what it's saying is we have to use, as we get faster and faster, we need more positive elevator. So let's draw a picture here. I'm gonna draw a picture of the airplane at the two different flight conditions. There's the elevator, that's the tail down there, and this is the wing. Here's the CG. And we're gonna, we know that this airplane's stable because we calculated that before. So the neutral point is here, and that's where the net lift acts. So at our high speed condition, this is gonna be our CL at a high velocity. And we've got the net pitching moment CM0, and that's just constant. So that doesn't change with flight condition. So I'm just drawing the forces of these. So this is our high velocity CL. And then we know that if we go to the low velocity, we get a much higher CL. So let me draw that in as a dotted line. So there's our low velocity CL. And then let's draw the elevator back here. So the, the elevator for high velocity is straight back, right? Pretty much zero deflection. So this is the elevator for high velocity. And then for the low velocity, it goes negative. So I'm gonna exaggerate it, but this is about it's way more than three degrees, but it's negative. So here's the elevator for the low velocity. It's negative. So does that make sense? I mean, so the net look at that. So if we're at the high velocity condition, there's no elevator here, so it's not doing anything, no pitch up or down. So we're pitch trim, so this lift times this moment arm, nose down must be matching the nose up here. That's what it looks like. How about at the higher velocity? Now we've got more CL. So we got more nose down. 
So at the lower velocity, we need the negative elevator to pitch nose up to create more nose up. So we're getting force downward here, and it's going to push it up like that. So that makes sense physically. How about what is the pilot doing? At the high velocity, the stick that he's using to control the airplane, let's put the pilot in up here. So here's the stick that he's pushing. So the stick's pretty much up straight uh, for the high velocity. And then which way does the stick move in order to get the elevator to go up like that? Now we have to think, okay, what do you do to pitch the airplane nose up? You're gonna pull on the stick. And so to pitch up, we're gonna need this kind of elevator, right? That's gonna make it pitch up. So the stick, for that lower velocity must be further back because he's pulled on it. And that's just, that's, her, that's totally dependent upon how the stick is attached to the tail. But the stick is attached to the tail so that you pull back on it, the pitch nose up and the elevator goes up to make that happen. And that's negative. So that's important that you make that connection, the stick to the elevators, pulling on the stick makes the elevator go trailing edge up, which is negative. Okay, does that make sense? If you're a pilot and you wanna go slower, like here we are at our high velocity and you wanna trim at a lower velocity, does it make sense to pull on the stick? Airplane's gonna pitch up when you do that, right, a little bit kind of feels natural to slow down, right? If you're running and you want to stop, you have to lean back. So I, it all fits. Talking about pilot perception of what he thinks is good. All right, so it turns out that, that this change in elevator with respect to velocity being positive gives good feedback to the pilot it has nothing to do with whether the airplane's stable or not. And it totally has to do with whether the pilot feels like the airplane flies in the way that he thinks it should fly. And so this is, this is good. If we get this kind of change in elevator with respect to velocity, that is, if you go faster, you need to go more downward with the elevator which means you go forward with the stick to go faster or to go slower, you pull back on the stick. So that's good feedback to the pilot for that reason. It also makes sense because let's say that you're flying along and you want to go slower, but you don't, don't want to change the throttle. Can you do that? You nose the airplane up to climb, right? and it's gonna slow down. Vice versa, if you wanna go faster, you'll nose the airplane down and it will descend and go faster. And that's consistent with this kind of motion of the stick as well. So that's why there's two reasons why it seems natural to the pilot is because if he wants to go faster, he'll go like this. And that's what we need to trim at a faster velocity. Or if he wants to go slower, he'll go like this and that's what he needs to trim at the lower velocity. And it also seems natural to go like this to go faster and to go like this to go small, slower. Now that's just feedback to the pilot. We're st still talking about trim. So you'll push the stick forward, you'll nose down, and then you'll trim at that faster velocity eventually. So this is something that you need to memorize, but also the reason why is that If the pilot pulls on the stick, he naturally wants to go slower, and that's what we get when we calculate the trim condition with the elevator. The other thing we can look at, we've just done a plot, but this comes from 
the elevator trim solution. And so we can actually use that formula and calculate that derivative. So that's what we'll do next. So we need this formula for the elevator. So that was the over there on that other screen that we were looking at. That's the draw a picture and talk through it kind of explanation. Here's the math explanation. We're going to take a derivative of this one with respect to velocity. And we're going to remember when we were doing our calculations, what changed in this formula when we changed the airspeed? Because we're taking the derivative, right? So do you remember what terms changed in this? CL trim, right? That's the only thing. The determinant stayed the same. So this is the only thing that, that we're going to need to take the derivative of. And then we're going to look at this and say, well, what are the signs on this? Because remember, we want this to be greater than zero for the good feedback to the pilot. Because that means you have to pull on the stick to go slower. You have to push on the stick to go faster. Pushing on the stick gives you positive elevator, and that is positive elevator goes faster. So do we get this? Looks like we do, because we already calculated it, right? But how did this vary? If you go faster, did we need more CL or less CL? Remember that we had a low airspeed and a fast airspeed. Which one needed more CL? The lower airspeed. So if we increase the velocity, that means CL goes down. So this derivative is negative. Velocity goes up, CL goes down, the needed CL. Okay, so what are the signs of this thing? So that means this thing is negative. How about CM alpha? And you say, I don't know. I have to calculate it to find out if the airplane is stable. So let's say the airplane's stable. CL alpha is going to be negative, right? So for a stable airplane, which we had, then that's going to be negative. And do you remember what the determinant turned out to be? It's like minus 4.7, right? Most of the time that determinant is negative for a stable airplane. So do we get this? I hope we do because we just proved it with numbers. Minus, 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 and it is going to be positive. So notice that not only does this pitch stability mean that the airplane is pitch stable, but it also means that we get good feedback to the pilot. So it's a double good reason to make sure CM alpha is negative. So from this form, negative. And we get good feedback to the pilot as well. Now, how much good feedback is going to de be determined by the numbers that go in here? But that's more human factors than what the pilot likes. Yeah.
Not necessarily because if there's too much stick motion to trim at different air speeds and the pilot won't like that either. So then that comes down to, well, they've done studies with pilots and what they like and what they don't. And that's the same that's true with CM alpha. I mean, what's a good value of CM alpha? That comes from experience with pilots and airplanes. All right, so one more thing. Let's say that the is zero, which would most likely come from the only term that could possibly change would be CM alpha. So that would mean that we have a neutrally stable airplane. So another sign of a neutrally stable airplane, does it not, but the pilot doesn't even have to change the stick to fly at different airspeeds. And that means he gets no feedback at all to what he's doing. Flying at 140 feet per second, sticks here. Flying at 220 feet per second, sticks in the same spot, and he's gonna say, that's weird. So this is neutrally stable. Stable, and we get no feedback. This situation would be kind of like you driving your car down the interstate and you we and what do you normally have to do? This would be similar to okay, you go into the turn, and then once your car starts turning, then you go back to the middle. So you can see how this might be weird to the pilot as well. So the pitch stability gives us this good feedback. Um, how are we doing on time? Okay, so this will be the last thing we we'll do today. You can actually use this in flight testing to find out where the neutral point is in the airplane. Is it? I noticed when I stand over there, it goes away. I'll try not to stand over there. Let me know if it cuts out again. I just put new batteries in it on Friday, so I can't imagine we're running out of electricity. All right, so let's say we have an airplane. Drawing the whole deal here. Here's the wing. Here's the aerodynamic center of the wing. Here's the tail. Here's the aerodynamic center of the tail. CG's here. And we think from our calculations that the neutral point is here. In other words, we've done the formulas and we wanna go up and fly the airplane and find out, are we right? because we're gonna start putting that information in the pilot's handbook and the loading of the airplane to tell the pilot where the neutral point is and where, where he can load the airplane, right? So how do we validate that neutral point? So you can start marching the CG backward. And the stability goes down some but then we look here and we say, well, okay, this feedback to the pilot is gonna go down as well, right? So that may be a good way to measure how close we're getting to the neutral point. And we could keep marching it back. And at some point, the pilot would lose any feedback at all. And we could say, okay, there's the neutral point. But it's also pitch neutrally stable and so we're putting our pilot at risk by putting him in an airplane that's not stable. But what we can do is collect data at a bunch of different CG locations as to this thing here. So let me show you how we do that. So we would fly the airplane at 
CG position, call it H1. So that would be this forward one here. And then we record, tell the pilot, okay, go up and fly at a bunch of different airspeeds. And we'd record what elevator he needed to do in the airplane in order to maintain that. And as long as we're far forward of the neutral point, we get positive feedback. And so we get this slope. And we're good. Pilot comes back down, lands. We put some weight in the back of the airplane and shift the CG back to position H2. And we send him back up. We don't go all the way back to where we think the neutral point is because we don't want to put him in danger. And then we record what elevators he needs to fly at different airspeeds. And we're going to get a lower slope here. because we're closer to that neutral point. And then we're gonna to fly to another airspeed. I mean, sorry, another CG. That's even closer to the neutral point. So we get a slope here. Right? And so we record those slopes. H1, H2, this is H3. And then we plot those slopes versus CG position. I need to do a plot over here. I'm gonna erase my airplane. I'm gonna plot a data point for each one of these. So I'm gonna take that slope that I calculated. And I'm gonna plot that versus CG location and for H1, I got a steeper slope, so I'm up here. For H2, I got a lower slope. For H3, I got a lower slope. I draw a line through that. And where it goes to zero, that tells me that's the neutral point. Because that's the condition where I get no feedback, so that means CM alpha is zero and I have no feedback for this. And I can, that way I can do this without sending the pilot up to fly at that unstable or marginally stable condition. So in 714, and if we have time this semester, I might have my grad student who does flight testing at Bombardier come in and show you how to do this. We do this in, in 714 in flight simulation software, you pair up with another person and you sway, take turns flying to different uh, airspeeds and record this data and try to predict the neutral point of the airplane. So. Okay, next time we're gonna add what's called a trim tab to the airplane. Um, and we're gonna go over the homework. So make sure you have the homework done um, next time, I've updated the homework sheet on Blackboard to clarify where you got some of the numbers. I mentioned the homework problems. Some of the numbers you need to get from part one that you've already done. Um, and so I've just updated the wording there so you know where to get the numbers from.